everyone and welcome to English Like a Native with me, your host, your teacher, Anna English. Today we are looking again at British English slang words and specifically today we're looking at slang words beginning with the letter E. Now we've already looked at A, B, C and D. We've learned a lot of fantastic slang words that are used by natives on a regular basis but they're not often written and therefore they're not often taught. So hopefully you've already gained quite a lot from those lessons and if you haven't seen them then I do suggest you check out the previous lessons A, B, C and D and make the most of them. But today we are looking at E and I am dual streaming here on Facebook and on YouTube. If you want to see the notes written down then you have to come over to YouTube. The link is in the description Facebook um, and you guys on YouTube you know how it works. Hello! I've also got my patrons in the patient, the patron chat room. Hello guys! You can feel free to send me a message there on the Patreon um, Skype room and I will answer you. But let's get straight into it. Slang terms beginning with E. Well, the very first one that we say is easy peasy. Easy peasy. Now, this primarily is a quite a childish word or childish term that's used to mean very easy. It was very easy. It was easy peasy. And we like it because it's it's fun to say. Easy peasy. Even though it is a childish term, there are adults who use it. I've certainly said, there you go, easy peasy. In fact, there's an even longer version. Some people say easy peasy lemon squeezy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. <laughs> the example sentence I've given is learning to sing is easy peasy. So there you go. I think that's quite a simple one to know. The next one is an earful. An earful. An earful. And an earful describes when somebody shouts at you or they tell you off and they, they do they talk quite a lot. They give you an earful of their anger. An earful. Um, so the example sentence I've used here is when I got home, my mother gave me an earful about the state of the kitchen. If I talk about the kitchen being in a state, then it is messy. If something is in a state, it's in a mess. You can say a person is in a state, she's in a right state. It means you're hysterical or you're a mess somehow. Maybe your hair's all over the place, you're like, uh, like, whoa, she's in a right state. Maybe they're drunk, they're in a right state. Um, so an unusual state, it basically means. So my mum, when I got home, gave me an earful, she shouted at me, gave me an earful about the state of the kitchen, the mess of the kitchen. Okay, um, YouTube, we are on very low numbers today. So why don't you all do me a favor on YouTube and Facebook. Now, right this second, all of us press the share button. There you go, press the share button. Let's get lots of people in. It's easy peasy, it's free to do. And while you're there, make sure you press the like button or the love button over there on Facebook. And let's get sharing this lovely Friday lesson. Uh, okay, so easy peasy and earful. What is next? The next phrase is the word, the slang word earner. Earner. So you earn money, which means you make money, you earn money. But if something is an earner, we normally say a good little earner or a good earner. And this refers to a job that pays well. So if a job pays you well, it could be even just an odd job that you do. Maybe at the weekends you help the local people with their gardens. You go around and you do some gardening for the local people, your neighbours, and they pay you and you say, actually, this is a good little earner. This little job I do on the side is a good little earner. And the example sentence I've given here is, I'm really glad I took that contract. It's a good little earner. It's a good little earner. Okay, some of you on YouTube have clicked that share button. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. And um, yes, how easy was it? Easy peasy. Okay, so a good little earner. 
The next word is the word earwig. Earwig. Now, an earwig is a bug, a bug that is known for crawling into your ear, burrowing in. It's, oh, oh, it gives me the creeps. But if I say you are earwigging, if I use it as a verb to earwig, it means that you listen in secretly, you listen to somebody else's conversation. So if I'm sat at the bus stop, I'm minding my own business, I'm looking at something on my phone, there's two people next to me talking to each other and I'm listening to their conversation. I am earwigging. I am earwigging. Um, another term for this is to eavesdrop. Eavesdrop. I don't mean to eavesdrop, but I just heard you talking about this. I don't mean to eavesdrop, but, but you, you earwig. And the example sentence I've given here, which you can see on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, I've said, I caught James earwigging on my telephone call. I caught James earwigging on my telephone call. Naughty James. He shouldn't be listening in. It's very rude. <laughs> okay, the next one is the word easy. Now, we know what easy means. That's easy peasy, but... If someone describes you as a person, if someone describes you as easy, it would mean that you are quick to put out. You are quick to put out. And put out means to have sex. So if, um, if I go on a date with a man and on that first date, we've had dinner, I've only just met him, we've had dinner, We've been together for a few hours and he says, do you want to go and uh, get some coffee back at my house? And I know what he means. And I say, okay. And I go back to his house and we have sex. <gasps> then I am easy. I am easy because I gave it up very quickly. I didn't wait to get to know him. I was easy. If, if I say yes quite easily, then I'm easy. Okay, so it's not a very nice thing for someone to say to you. If they say to you that you're easy, it doesn't feel very nice. Okay, so the next word on the list is um, eating. Eating. Now, we know what eating means, of course. It means to consume food. We eat our food. But if I say to you, hey, what's eating you? What's eating you? It means what's upsetting you. What's wrong? So if I look angry or upset, like, you say, Anna, what's eating you? And I say, nothing, just had a bad day. I've only got a few people watching my, my live lesson, that's all. So what's eating you? All right, the next one is the word egghead, egghead. In fact, we have a program here in the UK called The Eggheads. And to be an egghead is just to be an intellectual person, to be someone who knows a lot of information. You must know the kind of person I'm talking about. The person who, in a quiz, knows everything. Even the most um, obscure information, you ask them and they know the answer. And you're like, how do you know that? How do you remember all these, all these facts and figures? That kind of person is an egghead, an intellectual. Are you an egghead? I'm not an egghead. I forget facts and figures so easily. Just doesn't want to stay in my head. Okay, hello if you're joining me. I can see the numbers are going up slowly but surely. Hello. I hope you're having a happy Friday. I hope you've got that Friday feeling. To have the Friday feeling is to feel excited about the weekend. I know some of you in different parts of the world, Friday is your day off. So I hope you're having a great day off if you are. And uh, I'm glad that you're taking the time to come and join me. Okay, the next word on the list is the phrase to have an ego trip or to be on an ego trip. If you are on an ego trip, it means that you're overestimating yourself. You think a lot of yourself and you're telling everybody else how wonderful you are. You're on an ego trip. And it's normally not a good thing. If someone's on an ego trip, it's not a good thing. 
So I might say, I had to leave the meeting because David is on such an ego trip and it's driving me crazy. So David is in this meeting, he thinks he's amazing, he's talking so much about himself and how good he is and it's irritating me. He's on an ego trip, so I had to leave because I can't listen to it, okay? Um, one of you is asking, what are my shoes? They are my glittery blue shoes for my Bella and Beans children's channel. And um, those of you on YouTube, Ta-da! My Bella and Bean shoes. Glittery blue. Good for dancing in. Okay, the next word is the word effing. Now, effing is short for a bad swear word. Um, it's short for fuck. Okay, bad swear word. So, uh, we use this if we don't want to swear. We're angry and we want to emphasise our anger but we don't want to actually swear, you'd say effing. So for example, I pretend I've been sacked from my job. I might say, oh, the boss sacked me today. So I told him I didn't want that effing job anyway. I didn't want that effing job anyway. So it's to emphasize your, ang when you're angry, it emphasizes your meaning, but it's just slightly kinder, slightly nicer because you're not using the actual swear word. Okay? So, the next word that we have here is elbow grease. Elbow grease. Now, this is one I heard a lot when I was growing up. Elbow grease. And elbow grease means effort and hard work. So, you're usually told to put some elbow grease into it. Give it a bit of elbow grease. And the example I've given here is if you're cleaning the oven, but the oven is really dirty and you're having a hard time cleaning it, someone watching you might say, look, when you're cleaning the oven, you need to give it a bit of elbow grease. You need to give it a bit of elbow grease. And you're like, oh, I'm scrubbing it as hard as I can. Like, no, you need to give it some more elbow grease. Come on. So elbow grease. Lovely. All right, lots of questions coming through, lots of comments. Um, guys, wait till the end and I promise I will stay and do some questions at the end, so do bear with me, all right? Okay, so the next word or phrase is make ends meet. So when ends meet, when ends meet, it means that your income matches your outgoings. So you've got lots of bills, you've got five bills, 50 pounds worth of bills, let's say, and you make 50 pounds every month. And that 50 pounds will pay off your bills. So you make enough, you make ends meet. You make ends meet. And um, to make ends meet is a phrase that we use regularly. The example sentence I've given here is, I need to take a second job because at the moment I can't make ends meet. I don't make enough money to pay off my bills. I can't make ends meet. Okay, so try to remember that phrase. That is a commonly used phrase. Okie dokie, the next word is engaged. Now, I'm sure most of you know generally what engaged means, but I don't mean engaged to be married. I don't mean when you wear a ring on your ring finger. I mean, when you phone someone and they're already on the phone, and you phone them and it goes beep, 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 beep. They are engaged. The phone is engaged. So you can say they were engaged, or you can say the phone was engaged, or the phone's engaged. The example sentence I've given here is, um, I tried calling, but the phone was engaged. I tried calling, but the phone was engaged. I couldn't get through. I couldn't get through, the phone was engaged. Those of you on Facebook who are asking to see the words, there are notes um, on YouTube. So if you're watching on Facebook, I can't get the words on Facebook, but you can watch on YouTube right now. Just click on the link in the description of this video, come to YouTube and check out the notes that I've written for you. Okay, the next word is the word 
epic, epic. Now, if something is epic, it's really amazing. I use this word a lot myself, actually. Oh, it was epic. It, he is such an epic singer. Um, that was such an epic day. To be epic, it is epic. You have to listen to this album, it's epic. It's really amazing. And the example sentence I've given is, tonight's show, tonight's show was amazing. So I've been to see a show, it was the best show I've ever seen, and I would say, tonight's show was epic. Tonight's show was epic, it was really amazing. Okay, the next one is a phrase that I don't really use, but apparently it is common among a lot of natives. Um, and it's the phrase eating irons. Eating irons, like to iron your clothes. Eating irons, and this means cutlery, like knives, forks and spoons. Eating irons. And the example sentence I've given here is, how can I eat my dinner without eating irons? You've forgotten to give me a knife and fork. How can I eat my dinner without eating irons? Hmm? Please tell me. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, so the next one, another naughty one. Lots of naughty ones under the letter E. The next one is end away. To get your end away. Remember this one because this one comes up a lot. If you get your end away, it means you have sex again. Sex keeps coming up time and time again. To get your end away. So the example sentence I've given is Billy, Billy is a, a male name, a name for a man. Billy hasn't come home. Perhaps he's getting his end away. <gasps> Naughty Billy. Billy hasn't come home. Perhaps he's getting his end away. Tut, 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 Billy. Okay. So, good one to remember, because I do hear it said many times. So the next one, again, is a common one, and that's the word X, spelt E-X, X. And so I might talk about my X, his X, her X. And X basically means previous, but when we just talk about my X, his X, her X, we are talking about their previous boyfriend. So their previous boyfriend. So my ex is short for my ex-boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend anymore. He is my ex-boyfriend. But most of the time we'll just shorten it to ex. My ex. And the example sentence I've given here is she wanted to avoid seeing her ex. So she hid in the bushes until he passed. So she's walking down the street. She sees her ex walking towards her. <gasps> She jumps in the bushes. She hides behind the, the leaves, peering out. She wanted to avoid seeing her ex. So she hid in the bushes until he passed. Whew, that was close. Okay, the next word is another shortened word and this is exec, exec. And this is short for executive, executive. Um, so if you have any executives who work in your office, then you will probably say, "We." Um, I was talking to the exec of the company rather than I was talking to the executive of the company. Um, and the example sentence I've given here is, they had a meeting scheduled with the execs that afternoon. They had a meeting scheduled with the execs that afternoon. So exec short for executive. Okay, Facebook. I'm seeing lots of angry faces. I've seen lots of angry faces. Someone keeps hitting the angry face button. Guys, it's Friday. Don't be angry. Um, if you are enjoying this lesson, then don't show me angry faces. Please show me likes or loves. And YouTube, you know what to do. If you haven't already, please click that thumb up. Thank you. Okay, the next one, quite a funny one, is the phrase, excuse me. Excuse me. Now, there's a difference between excuse me in America and excuse me in the UK. Um, in the UK, we tend to say excuse me when we, we have a bodily function. So if we burp or if we fart, 
if we um, if if we do something like knock a drink or if we knock someone um, or if we have to leave someone's company, maybe our phone rings or we need the bathroom, we have to go. We say, excuse me. Uh, oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. Um, and I think in America they say, pardon me. Pardon me. We do also say, excuse me, if we want someone's attention. Excuse me. But we say, excuse me, also for bodily functions. Okay? So, oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me today. And the example sentence I've given here is, oh, excuse me. So this person has farted and they've said, oh, excuse me, I have terrible wind. In fact, can you excuse me? I need to use the bathroom. So someone with terrible wind is farting a lot. Oh, whew, excuse me, I have terrible wind. Oh, can you... um? Can you excuse me? I need to use the bathroom. <laughs> okay. All right, we have two more and then we're, we're at the end of the list. So nice and short lesson today. Um, so the next one we have uh, is the phrase eye candy. Eye candy. And eye candy basically describes someone who is attractive to look at. So if I look at you, and I think you're nice to look at, you're, you're handsome or you're pretty, then I will say, wow, you're some eye candy. You're sweet on the eyes. You're, you're some eye candy. Um, and the example sentence I've given here is, I hope there will be some eye candy at the venue tonight. I hope there will be some nice, attractive people to look at at the venue tonight. Eye candy. Great. And the very last one on the list is the word eyeball. Now, eyeball is a noun. It means your actual eye, your eyeball. But as a verb, to eyeball somebody is to stare. So if I'm staring at you like that, you might say, stop eyeballing me. Why are you eyeballing me? Okay. Um, it's not good to eyeball someone. It makes people feel very uncomfortable. So when you feel uncomfortable from someone staring at you, then you would use that word eyeballing. And the example sentence I've given here is, the police officer eyeballed me. It made me nervous. The police officer eyeballed me. It made me nervous. Okay, cool. Well, there you go. There are the notes.